Let's, uh, let's pray. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We bless you, God. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us this time to be with you. Lord, to study what you want for us. Lord, because you guide and you direct us. And Lord, you teach us how. And we thank you, Lord, for all your scriptures and all that will help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, um, what we've been learning about is healthy leadership, healthy elders and healthy deacons. And um, what we've learned is that leadership in the church is Jesus-shaped and Jesus-centered. And that means what he provides for us in terms of, of modeling and what he provides for us uh, in terms of direction. We want to be like Jesus. It's a little bit cliche, and, and we can almost, yeah, I, I know I've heard that, but God wants us to be more like him, and it's really, it, it's really interesting how quickly uh, we can take the word and imprint on it our thoughts. And so that's why we have to continually, uh, though many of us have been in church for years, uh, we have to continually remind ourselves of what God wants from us in leadership. How he wants to, uh, to lead. And so the master metaphor for the, um, for the church in 1 Timothy is the household. Why is that? It's because God wants us to take on a familial, uh, a, a familial type responsibility over the church. Uh, and, and you might say, well, how else could you do it? Well, we could run it like a corporation, right? We could run it like, um, how else could we run it? We could run it like a football team. We could run it like any, any a number of ways. And, you know, being American as we are, we could sit there and say, well, you know, yeah, the, the, um, the whole idea of running it like a football team is a great idea. Pick up the ball, the passer is the quarterback, you know, and then we'll have everybody kind of make the little teams and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get things done real aggressive. But that's not what the Lord provided for us. He wants us to have a household. And if you think about it, when you have a family, you, you care about that family. And you'll take care of that family. And you'll lead that family in the best way that they can receive and you can give. Does that make sense? And so when we think about leadership, we want to think about responsibilities, not titles or offices. Because, you know, it, it's kind of interesting. I, I don't know what you, what you all know about other churches, but in other churches, um, the leadership roles can be very, very much like corporate offices. That person's the deacon. That person's the minister. That person's the, the preaching pastor. That person's the, this pastor, that pastor. And we definitely want people to have responsibilities, right? But sometimes we then think of pastor so-and-so, or minister so-and-so, or deacon so-and-so. And so we, it, when we do that, it's not a bad thing, but can it lead to us not thinking about our responsibilities and just thinking about more about titles. And so that's why I think we have to go back to the scriptures. And we talked about a couple of um, a couple of different definitions starting out. And we talked about elders and overseers and shepherds. Right? We, uh, you know, overseers and shepherds and, and um so we, we, it talks about things like episcope, you know, in the Greek. Um, it talks about pastors. It talks about also deacons and ministers and servants. And so we, in our last lesson, we went over the definition for elders and overseers and shepherds. And so we talked about what that means. And one of the things that it, these things mean when we talk about leaders and we talk about the scriptures, the scriptures reveal that Christian leaders lead first in their character. 
Christian leaders lead first in their character. The Bible prioritizes character over duties. It prioritizes character over duties. Why? Because good works flow out of our hearts. Good works flow out of our hearts. We can have a list of duties to do, and we can be mean-spirited, or we can just not be caring, or we can just do whatever. And we can just kind of basically fulfill things because that's in the job description. How many times have we done that at work where there's something you didn't really want to do and you just kind of did what had to be done, but it didn't flow out of your heart, right? If we understand what God wants from us in our character, then our gifts will make a way for us, right? Or our or the gifts that God has given us. So let's let's talk about the character of the deacon. Now some churches don't have deacons. Let me see. Okay. Some churches don't have deacons. Uh, we do. Um, they'll have ministers, right? A uh, minister is just uh, a, a Latin translation of the word deacon. Now we do have ministers. And, the way that we kind of do things is we have deacons, uh, we have ministers as, as kind of longer standing uh, deacons, right? They, they've, been in the, they've been in the role longer and they're, they're more mature, but they're basically the same thing. Now, <coughs> some, as I said, some churches don't have the, the title deacon, but they have the, the jobs, right? People do things in churches. You'll, you'll hear about ministry teams. You'll hear about, um, well, who does this and who does that? There are people who work in those servant areas. But we have to define those areas by what the Bible says. Because if we don't, right, if, if we don't look, if we just use the titles or we don't think about what the Bible says, then what we will end up doing is we'll end up making it, making that job a political job. It'll end up being a power, a power job. It's been said that some, um, by somebody one time that church is the best place to go to get free power. Right? Because it's an all-volunteer organization. And some people are drawn to that. Um, uh, it's interesting that like some people when they change churches they only change churches to bishops churches or to, to, to different or to big churches right rather than helping little churches it's a difference in character right so we have to be careful about power because even in a small place people can decide that's what they want but that's not what God is looking for. He's looking for servants. And so when you go back, this word deacon is diakonos, right? Diakonos. And that means, in the Greek, servant. And now when we look at the elder, when we looked at the character for elder, the elder had, uh, as its, um, had as its main theme to be above reproach, to be blameless. And so this is a parallel theme. Um, and it's a portrait as opposed to a list. You know? Have you tithed this much? Have you been to this many services? It, it's not those kinds of things. It's, it, is a, it is a portrait. It's a picture of somebody who can serve. Now, one requirement that is lacking in the deacon area, right, is apt to teach, apt to teach. Now, it's, and why is that? Well, that apt to teach part is for a more mature, is for, for a more mature layman or for a more mature elder. And that's what it's supposed to do. We do teaching. At the lower levels, we do teaching at the deacon and the minister level to, uh, in order to prepare to go higher, right? Is that understood? So that's what we do. But in, in the description, the elder, between the difference between the elder and the deacon 
is, is just that, right? Now, the deacon and the minister is not just an elder in waiting. We have to also look at it that way. Notice that it's possible for us to think, oh, well, I'm going to get on the deacon rung, and then I'm going to go to minister, and then I'm going to go to pastor, and then I'm going to go to bishop. We can turn it into a career. And see, it's not bad. The, the Bible even says if a man wants to be a bishop, it's a good thing. But one thing that is really bad for us is ambition. Ambition is fine at work. I want to be a supervisor. I want to be this. I want to be that. Right? But in the church, ambition is awful. Because it'll cut you down, it'll make you uh, cut corners, it'll make you take shortcuts, it'll make you act in a way uh, that is contrary to how God wants us to bring people into the church. Now, what we're doing, <clears throat> one thing I want us to notice is that there's a maturity that's required to be a deacon. Or, uh, or an elder that has to happen. Why? Because we're matching people to the need. Let's look at Acts chapter 6. In Acts chapter 6, it says, And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Now, if you notice here, it could be real simple for us to go, Oh, yeah, they, they just didn't want to get down on that level. No, it's not what they're saying. They're saying we need to, we need to read the word of God. We need to study it. We need to, to get our messages and our lessons together. We need to do whatever we're going to do. And we have all of these duties, all of these other duties to serve tables. But we need to stay on the main thing. So what are they going to do? Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among ye, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint. Over this business. <clears throat> but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the same pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased, and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. <laughs> and so, the first thing that they looked for, again, was the character. What? Look at verse 3. Honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, that they would that they would then appoint them over that business. They needed somebody who could represent the church in serving tables. Yeah. And that didn't mean just grabbing plates, right? But that meant grabbing plates, clearing tables, helping people in, helping people out, cleaning up. Anything we do for the church is honorable. <clears throat> and we have to have the have of honest report and full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. And then let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 3. Notice what it says here. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 8. It's going to describe... It's going to describe the deacons. It says, look, Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-toned, that means sincere, not given to much wine, and not greedy of filthy lucre. Lucre is another word for money. Holding the mystery, that is the revealed truth, of the faith in a pure conscience. 
and let these also first be proved, and let them use, then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchase to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. I want you to notice that it says, um, it, it says tested. It says tested. Um, in verse 10, uh, and also let these first be proved. We have to make sure that as we involve people in the ministry, that they do get tested. Because you know for sure, after you get made deacon, after you make minister, the testing comes. Amen? Brother Gabe, would you say that that's true for you? That everything was fine, then you became a deacon <laughs> slash minister, and all of a sudden the challenges come? Yeah, you, yeah, you do encounter different kinds of positions where you have to learn, you have to adapt, and things that you didn't have to deal with before because you know, weren't doing certain things, but now that you're put in a position, it kind of makes it, you know, you get different tests, yeah. different trials, different, different For sure. Things to discourage you. <clears throat> yeah. Right? And I know you, that you're kind of a, uh, you're a quieter person in some ways, right? And so, especially when you get into, or at least not getting in, in front of people, what would happen? Boom, you, you got tested right away. But then there's also tests in our personal life, right? Things coming against you to discourage you, mm -hmm. right? And th those things will happen. I mean, think about um, Brother Eli and Sister Kim right now. Yeah. David getting sick, right? Yes. Brother, Bernie and, um, Brother Bernie and Sister a a Angela, at their age, Having COVID, that's kind of, kind of a little dicey, right? But yet they're they're plowing forward, mm -hmm. and so this proving needs to take place, and we got to be careful that we don't appoint people for for political reasons. And part of what we're doing here, also right now, is we're discipling. We're trying to build us up into a leadership unit. I, I don't want to say team because sometimes team in our American way of thinking um, is a very competitive thing. Yeah. Yes. And we don't want to be competitive. We want to be excellent, which is a different thing. Now, notice the, the Christ-like traits of a deacon, right? We want him to, we want him to be uh, an authentic disciple of Jesus. They need to have evidence of Christ's control in their lives, evidence of Christ's likeness in their discipleship in the home, uh, Christ-like interaction with others, self-control in the spirit, and in their motivations for leadership. Why do we want to be leaders? You know, there again, I, I've said sometimes people want to want to just get more and more powerful, and that's their thing. And that's not what Jesus wanted. Isn't that pro the problem with Judas? Right? Judas ultimately wanted more power. He was upset that Jesus wasn't taking over and kicking out the Romans the way that, as quickly as he wanted. And so that's why he sold Jesus. He thought that that was going to then foment that revolution. And so we can see that, that, uh, that ambition... And uh, comes with corruption. Now, let's look at verse verse eleven here. Notice in verse eleven, um, even so must their wives be be grave, meaning serious, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Now, notice that there's no test like this for the elders' wives. Uh, don't they need it? And there's kind of there's kind of two different ways to think about this, that there was no test on the other side. 
It could be that Paul was just adding this in as part of the list of things that um, that deacons and, and their wives, the character that they need to have. But also the second explanation is that there are women in these roles of servanthood. Mm-hmm. It would be silly to say that, that there there isn't, right? Because mm-hmm. we have we have the women's leaders, we have the women in charge of, of the, the children, etc. Uh, we have wo- women helping. Uh, how many times have we had uh, events here? And the men, you know, we're helping, but the ladies are doing the main cleaning. And so he's referring to women um, serving in that capacity. He talks about Phoebe uh, later on in the scriptures. And so mm-hmm. what, what Paul is trying to do is he's trying to get us to understand the character of these leaders. And so ladies, ladies have their own things that they battle with. And so what we've got to do is if ladies tend to click up, right? We have to make sure that the ladies uh, are in one of one accord. Notice Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. What does it say? They were in one, one place and one accord. Right? That's the, that is what brought the Holy Ghost down. Yes. And so we have to be, that's why we're here as a leadership, to coalesce as one, to get our <coughs> definitions down, to get our understandings of, of, of the character down. And we'll go on to some other things in, in, in later lessons. But the whole idea is that we're on one page and that we're all thinking the same. It, it doesn't mean that we're all, we're all NPC robots, but it definitely means that we have one mission, that we're behind one authority, mm-hmm. that we're of one power, amen? And so, when we look at this and we see that the, uh, we see that the ladies, uh, ha- the ladies also have to have that same character, right? Now, it, the re- so the reason that the, there's no um, requirement in the, in the elders is that the elder for, for the wives is that the elders um, they have that teaching ministry they have that preaching ministry and that's reserved for men so one of the things that one of the things that these scriptures right here reveal to us is that we cannot choose we cannot serve excuse me we cannot choose those who do not serve. We cannot choose those who do not serve. Why? Because if we don't serve, then we're, we're outside of what the Bible wants us to do. Mm-hmm. And it, it's, it's kind of like that one kid. Um, well, we've got five of them, right? But I think every, I hope every house has one. Um, but... You know, sometimes when you're trying, you're trying to get everybody in the house going, and you've got the compliant ones that that get dressed and they're ready, and they're sitting on the couch, they're waiting for you, and then there's the one who's lying on the bed, right, going, but nobody's chosen my socks, you know, nobody, nobody's combed my hair, right? They're not disobedient, but what are they doing? They're 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 not on the they're not on the train with us, right? And it holds us back. And I think if we get on the same, the same page of servanthood as leaders, that God is going to bless this church because we are going to be seen to be different. And that's what people are looking for. They are looking for some, uh, they are looking for a place that's different. And I think we have that, um, like especially with our greeting team. <coughs> I think the greeting team is doing such a great job because people really uh, feel when they come in. Like um, Alex, by the way, Alex and, um, and and Caitlin weren't here last week, so hopefully they were just kind of doing a little bit of vacation. Um, but the, I see when they they come in that they feel completely welcome, right? Uh, I see complete. I see how you know you go after people. Right? right? You guys go after them. 
and you pray for them. And, and people that, when the Lord says, go out into the highways and byways, compel them to come in, you fulfill that. Right? And uh, you don't know how often uh, Brother Paul and, and his family are here on a Saturday night practicing. And, and my wife and my kids too with them. Practicing, practicing, practicing. So it, it's about, the, the whole idea of leadership is all about character. All about who we are. And so folks, that's the primary thing that you and I have to work on. Because how we act is how everybody else is going to act. Right? Um, You know, I've been to some services where people in other churches act in particular ways, and you can see that is from the head coming down. Right? I want us to be known as a servant church. And I pray that you see me as a servant leader. If you don't come and talk to me, amen. My, I, I, I try to be a servant, right? But I pray that, that that goes down the line and that people see us as a servant church. And sometimes, you know, that means that people are going to walk on us. It doesn't mean we need to be a carpet for them. But sometimes people get over, right? Uh, I remember one time somebody came to the church and uh, got over on Brother Fred for $20. And you know what? God fixed them up. God allowed things to happen. Right? And so, but, but what we need to do is we need to be servants. So next time, we're going to go over, we're going to go over the specific, having talked all about character, we're going to talk about the specific duties of deacons and elders. Any, any thoughts, any questions? Brother Paul and, and Brother Fred, did you guys have any challenges when you when you first became a deacon? No. Nope. What happened, if you don't mind? Uh, a lot of physical illnesses <laughs> came upon me. A lot of physical illnesses came upon my daughter, then upon my wife. She'll tell about that someday, and she's told the full story. But it's a lot of physical illnesses, and in years, these physical illnesses, I have never had them. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, this last week, I think <clears throat> when I see the like the army of God, I, when I think about these things through the week that happened to, to our praise team mostly, I see like. You think why are the generals in war and the and the and the colonels always so well protected? It's like man, they're like elite people, right? What about all those guys out there in the field getting killed? But I think it's because if the generals get taken out, the enemy doesn't have to do anything with the rest of the people. They get demoralized. Sunday night, I threw up so violently I almost ended up in the hospital. Monday, my daughter and my wife got it. Tuesday. Uh, Sister Kim, that thing happened. Wednesday, something happened with Rachel. So it doesn't have to be the whole praise scene, but when you take the, yeah. a few core people out, yeah. people go, whoa, man, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. You know? yeah. 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 Maybe we better back off on this. And now is not a time that the Lord wants us to back off on anything. Amen. So Amen. those type of things. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What about you, Brother Fred? in a good way uh, it, uh, drawing me closer to uh, my friends uh, I never talked to you and uh, now that I kind of like uh, talking to them it's not about the past it's about now what's going on and mostly it's and ask him, you know, they're going to church and stuff. And it's really, 
helping me a lot. And God is, is there all the time. And for me to give advice, good advice to persons, I don't get into their problems, but I try to give advice how to from the word. Not, not to make it worse. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and God is helping me with that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm happy <coughs> uh, uh, I'm getting more uh, wisdom. Or, Amen. All right. Good, yeah. good, good. good. Uh, so uh, that's all, what I got to say. And I'm, me and her are finally communicating without no arguments, no, you know. Because uh, what I went through with her, when her dad was uh, eight, I, I mean, I could I've lost it because her going over there and her brother not doing nothing and you know I, wanted, I could have told her no I don't want you to stay home with me mm -hmm. you know I could have been selfish and do that but I thank God that it happened Amen. I didn't let the enemy yes, enter Amen. Amen. what about you sister Victoria what about, so what about these lessons that are, are helping you or? The character, I think, a lot of things that I need to change as a person. I think a lot of um, little things that, whether they're in church or out of church, they just kind of help me to deal, make changes with my personality or how I need to view things. Yeah. You know, just yeah. perspective on certain things, you know? I totally, I totally get it. Because I feel lately like the scriptures have been calling on me to kind of chipping away at those edges, right? And I see, like you, you know, maybe, I don't know about you, patience, right? Patience is the thing that God works on me on, right? And I can see how God is working on my patience uh, all the time. And I thank God that he helps us work those things out. So we have to keep an open mind, sister. Um, right now I don't have patience. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but I, I see how God's been in my life. Um, there's a lot of things that were thrown at me, and it's like, you know, I can't do nothing about it. It's all in God's hands. That's, I, I can't vent like I used to. Because it, it's all it's all God. I have to leave it all to God. Um, but I believe we're under attack because we have Brother David sick. Mm -hmm. We have my father that was just passed, and the church is going through so much. Every almost everybody that's here in our church is getting attacked. Mm -hmm. So I believe we're going somewhere. Mm -hmm. Amen. We are. We are. Mm -hmm. And you know it's interesting. Um, he's carrying us through this, right? He's carrying us through. Because there's so much going on. Um, but it, yet, it doesn't overwhelm us. <coughs> We're just kind of, oh, okay, when we handle this one thing, we go from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. Amen. But we're going to keep praying for everybody. How about you, Sister Jean? Um, what is the question precisely? <coughs> um... How, is, how do so, I do what, this? Yes. Um, the qualifications definitely. I mean, just seeing my relatives being an example, my aunts and my mom, but then actually putting the rubber to the road. I think people in the church have changed since I was little. So learning how to um, navigate through different people's personalities and then some people, I noticed, and I'm just gonna say that they'll use the ministry um, to divide us up over here, but then they'll say comments, especially to the women, and then that discourages us as a unit to stick together. That's one of the main things I've seen as a woman. Um, and that sometimes they don't even realize that they're doing that, but 
So for me to just discount and dispel and just cast down imaginations that would come up against my mind to divide me against what our goal is and I'm to stay united. It's been an overcoming for me to learn mm -hmm. how to do that as a pastor's wife, but as your wife and as a sister in the church. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you know, to go back to, to what she said in the, in, in the beginning, um, the part about different people, people being different. Um, so we, we had uh, we had that young lady who came to church once on the baptized. So we had a I had a yes please. 